The statements made within this plant series are purely informational. These statements or anything discussed throughout this series are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. I am not a doctor, nor do I claim to be. It is advised that if you have any pre-existing medical conditions or take prescribed medication, talk to your doctor or local herbalist before using any plants. Make sure that you can identify a plant 100% before working with it, for I will not be held responsible. Use at your own risk. Hey witches, welcome back to the channel. It's the Wild Witch here. I hope that you're all doing amazing. Welcome back to another video in the plant series. Y'all, I'm excited for this video because it's the first plant we're featuring in this series. Now, I first do want to mention what I'm drinking. You can see I've already drank half of it because it's so good. But anyway, I am drinking a blooming tea. Now, if you've never heard about a blooming tea, or maybe you have, but you've never tried it or seen one, I will add a video to show you exactly what a blooming tea looks like. Now, I'm also adding some blooming tea balls to the giveaway that I'm doing. But anyway, let's just go ahead and dive right into this video. So the first plant to come forward that has a message to share, she wanted to be a part of this series, um, is going to be Galium Aparine. Now Galium Aparine does have a lot of common names and folk names, um, but I feel like the most widespread or known are going to be Cleavers, which is what I've grown up knowing her as, but she's also known as Bed Straw, Catchweed, Goosegrass, Sticky Weed, uh, sticky Wheelie, Velcro Weed, Everlasting Friendship, Love Man, and Lady Straw. Now, like I said, she does have more names than this, but a quick search online, and you can have all of those names right at your fingertips. Um, but for the sake of this video, let's just call her Cleavers. Now, you can often find Cleavers growing around the springtime, but it really will depend on where you live if you want to see her entire growth cycle. For example, where I currently live, I often see her young shoots first break through the ground from mid to late winter. However, in my hometown where I grew up, I typically see her from early to mid spring. Now she's normally here for a few short months and then she's gone just as quickly as she arrived. Now Cleavers is an annual herbaceous little powerhouse that belongs to the Ruby ACE family. Or if you're not familiar with this family, you might know one of the common names, which is going to be the coffee family, the matter family, and the bed straw family. And that's who Cleavers belongs to. So you can think of the bed straw family kind of being like her people, you know? But anyway, so Cleavers has some pretty specific characteristics that help with identifying her. Oh, look at that little bird. Anyway, they help with identifying her and makes this process fairly easy. So you can often find cleavers creeping along the ground and over and around the tops of other plants. If she doesn't have something to cling onto, then she will form these really thick mats on the ground. This cleavers grows in these really big patches. And so she needs support like those other plants, you know, to be able to grow um, tall like straight up if not she just grows on the ground and like I said she forms these really big mats that deer especially love for birthing mats and bedding. Now cleavers is also considered deer medicine but we'll get into that later on unless I forget. Now if I do forget or if I get to mention something specific about cleavers then I'll add it to the description box below so make sure that you check out that description box because I have a lot of information to share on cleavers and I'm only using this little outline because my Materia Medica is like this thick like I'm not kidding you. I'll have to get it one day and show you guys what it looks like. It is so big. Um, and it's just, I have so much information on cleavers. Like, I've worked with her for so many years. So, I hope that you guys will just bear with me. I hope that I don't leave anything out. I'm trying to just remember, you know, all of this information. And like I said, I made like a little outline to try to keep me on point. Because y'all know I talk an awful lot and I go off on a tangent. So, kind of like I'm doing right now. But anyway... Make sure you check the description box. So Cleavers is native to Europe, Western Asia, and some parts of Africa, but she's been introduced and now naturalized 
um, all over the place. You can find her in Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, and of course, all over North America. Now you can often find cleavers growing in um, shady areas that don't get a ton of sunlight and it's very damp. Now she will tolerate a little bit of sun and even a little dry soil, but y'all, she thrives in moist, damp areas. Now, like I said, you can often find her climbing all over the tops of other plants, like dominating them plants, suffocating them, no, I'm playing, I'm just joking. Anyway, she does climb all over the tops of other plants though, so you can find her growing with other vegetation in hedgerows, along fence rows, um, in ditches, along roadways. You can find her in uh, field margins and open woodlands and thickets, pastures, meadows, um, in waste areas, disturbed areas. You can find her in uh, floodplains, near creeks, uh, near rivers, streams, and even check if you have a barn or you know that someone has a barn. Even check there because I have a huge patch of cleavers growing along our barn. You know, we just moved at the end of February, 1st of March. Um, so anyway, when we first moved in, I had this huge, huge patch of cleavers growing. And, you know, it made me feel welcome. I sat out there and meditated with her and I got to meet some of the other plants that was out there. And it just felt like this was the right place to be, you know, and that I felt like I was being welcomed uh, to the land by these plant spirits. So it was, it was a great experience. And I love cleavers. I've worked with cleavers for a long time. But anyway... Cleavers was once used as a way to curdle milk to make cheese. She was also used as a sieve um, to, to uh, strain the milk. Now, like I said, she was, or like I said, she's she is loved by deer for, you know, those birthing mats and bedding, but people also use cleavers to stuff their mattresses and as a way to prepare uh, for childbirth, which I'm sure we got from our dear sisters. Now, if you go out around the springtime, you know, make sure to keep your eyes open for cleavers. You'll definitely know if you walk through a patch of cleavers or even if you brush up against one cleaver plant because she has these backward little hook hairs that she uses um, to adhere to you, to animal spur, and um, like I said, those other plants. And these little hooked hairs grow out of the leaves and stems. Now, she also has um, this this weak stem we've already mentioned, um, but it's it's square and it's very sticky, uh, and it can actually reach over three feet in height if she has something to cling to. You know, she's gotta have support. That stem is very weak, but also her roots are very weak too, so she does need that support. Now, Cleavers has these um, simple, narrow, lance, linear, or even oblong-shaped leaves that grow six to eight, that grow in six to eight whorls at the nodes. She also has these tiny, tiny four petal star shaped flowers that are green to greenish white that grow clustered in groups of two to nine that are born out of the leaf axles. Now, like I said, these flowers are very, very tiny. So when you are working with cleavers or getting to know cleavers, I want you to really get down on her level so that you can observe her. Like the flowers are so tiny, you might even miss them at first glance. So I want you to really put her in your face. And you'll notice when you're observing her, look at those petals. You'll notice they come to this fine point, like the, at the tips of them. And actually, the flowers remind me more of a compass than a star, but that's just my opinion. But you'll notice when the flowers like literally in your face that she also has this really light, sweet vanilla scent that I love and I've heard that deer especially love this scent as well. But again, we'll get into that a little bit later on. So let me look at my outline, make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, I remember. Okay, so Cleavers also has this globular fruits that grow one to three seeds clustered together that are also covered in all those rough little hairs that help with dispersing the seed. Now, I think that these little seeds, I mean, these little fruits, they, they remind me of fuzzy little testicles. Comment down below and let me know what you think they look like, but honestly, they look like little testicles to me. Um, so, Cleavers is ruled by the water element, and we can see this watery signature in her stem. 
uh, where she grows, how she nourishes the body, her herbal actions of being a lymphagogue and a diuretic, and her overall just juiciness. So Cleavers removes, um, our, our cleavers brings um, moisture to dry tissues. She moistens those, those dry tissues. She removes Saturn issues like stagnation and congestion, especially within that lymphatic system. Now, we can look at those um, stems that she has, and even, those, even the roots, they're very thin and thread-like, which indicate an excellent wound plant. Uh, so she's great for things like, well, wounds but anyway she's also great for the skin and skin conditions like acne eczema psoriasis um abscesses bulls chicken pox measles like cuts and scrapes venomous stings and bites um and of course you know the bleeding wounds now we can look at her stems again but this time we can look at the fine sharp edges on those stems and this indicates an excellent nervine or nerve soother. Now again, we can look at those stems, but this time we wanna look at the length of those stems and see the affinities for our long uh, vessels and passageways throughout our body. Now Cleavers is amazing at how she detoxifies the body and the blood to remove toxins. Now Cleavers is also ruled by Venus. So her planetary ruler is going to be Venus. And we can see these Venusian signatures in her leaves and how she supports the kidneys, as well as how she filters and cools the renal tubes, the ureters, and the urethra. She also um, soothes and moistens and cools a very hot, burning, dry, inflamed urinary tract. Now, overall, I think she is simply amazing for the entire urinary system. And again, we can see this signature in her long tubular stem structure. Now we can take another look at Cleaver's fine little rough hairs and really appreciate her filtering ability, especially on the kidneys and even the, the lymphatic system and the blood. You know, um, Cleaver's, sorry, hold on. Cleaver's, even though she's ruled by Venus, I want to mention that I also see some moon signatures in cleavers, especially her affinity for the breast and the uterus, you know, the, the elemental ruler being the water element, um, the white flowers, uh, her, her ability to work on our emotions. Now, this is geared more in, towards relationships. Um, with cleavers, but still there's that association there, you know. So, um, cleaver spruce, let's jump into those real quick. All right, so cleaver spruce, and I've already told y'all that they remind me of fuzzy little testicles, but they also remind me of swollen glands, especially down the, the sides, like the sides of the neck right here and back behind the ears, but also swollen lymph nodes throughout the body. Um, cystic breast, um, tonsil nodules, swollen glands, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not swollen glands, swollen um, joints, you know, it's really good for swollen joints, um, kidney stones and bladder stones, um, what else? Oh, as well as the swollen um, and inflamed prostate and swollen and inflamed testes or testicles. So cleavers helps to nourish and nurture the body when it's experiencing any of these issues and she helps the body heal from these issues. And again, we can see all of these signatures in those fruits and seeds, you know. Um, so like I said earlier, that cleavers is considered deer medicine. Uh, I'm, there's so many birds outside of my window right now. Anyway, so yeah, cleavers is considered deer medicine. So deer medicine is for people with a vata constitution. So vata people are often slender with very prominent joints. Um, deer people and vata people often have delicate features, um, a fine bone structure. A lot of times deer people are even, um, you know, like I said, very slender like deer and they're tall like a deer. However, I do know some vata constitution uh, people that are not are not tall but 
they they have like longer legs or longer arms with a shorter torso but overall they just seem a lot taller than you know what they are so dear people um they often carry this nervous energy about them just like deer do they're often very intuitive like deer but they often get caught up in their minds now deer medicine can help to open um our, all of our senses to experience with all of our senses not just the ones that we're taught you know when we're children but all of our senses um, deer medicine is also considered love medicine and an excellent nervine and remember how cleaver has got those fine sharp edges you know that's her signature of a nervine and deer also have this fine bone structure um, very sharp edges which indicates that excellent nervine now deer medicine can also teach us how to be gentle with ourselves as well as other wounded souls now i find deer medicine plants to be very elegant very poised um i find them to, i don't want to say dainty um because that's not what i'm looking for um i don't know i can't think of the word i'm wanting to say but i find you know very elegant very poised um i see them as elders you know they're very wise they they have so much wisdom and knowledge they're very grounding they're very calming like their presence is very grounding it makes you want to sit up tall and pay attention you know um i found that deer medicine plants um they it's like their presence can almost calm you down and bring you into your body so you can experience what they're telling you so you can feel you know what they're telling you i find that Deer medicine plants are like the like knowledge keepers, you know, and if we just sit down and shut up and pay attention, you know, they can pass this wisdom and this knowledge on to us. We can learn from deer medicine plants, and I love working with deer medicine plants. Uh, so I've personally, myself, I've worked with cleavers on myself for a very stagnant lymphatic system. Um, for swollen joints, um, I work with cleaver. I make a spring tonic. Actually, I can show you what it looks like right now because it's I don't strain it until the night. Anyway, this is um, my cleaver spring tonic that I use to nourish uh, the body and detox the body just after winter time, you know. Um, so I make this every year. I love using it. I've also um, work with cleavers for myself for tired achy like knotty feet because I have this problem wearing shoes I know I, I hate wearing shoes and mainly the time the the times that it bothers me is whenever we go hiking and um I'm not I'm not wearing shoes or I'm just wearing like water shoes like the last time we went hiking to this waterfall we had a couple mile hike up this like cliff and it was all rocky and anyway I wore just water shoes and I only put them on like halfway I was barefoot but anyway by the time we got done my feet were killing me and they had all these knots in them but there was a patch of cleavers uh, growing so I was able to work with cleavers and by the next morning my feet were perfect anyway I've also worked with cleavers um as deer medicine because I do have a vata constitution now um Cleavers. Okay, so everybody on my dad's side of the family, except for like maybe five or six people, gets kidney stones. And I used to suffer with kidney stones so bad. Them little devils are terrible. But anyway, once I started working with cleavers, I've not had one singular kidney stone. And that's been over six years. And I got kidney stones constantly. Like the most I had at one time was 28 kidney stones. And so I got them all the time. Like I said, everybody on my dad's side, except those few little people don't get kidney stones. Um, so yeah, I've not had one since. So I also find cleavers to be very grounding, very cooling. She helps to get me out of my head and bring me back down in my body so that I can experience this world with all of my senses. Cleavers has taught me about boundaries and relationships, but also how to help others heal from relationship trauma now this trauma can be current it can be past trauma and it can even be ancestral wounds that's been passed down she's helped me to find those patterns 
and create, um, it's kind of like creating a puzzle. You know, you've got all these pieces and you need to bring them together to form this cohesive picture. She's helped me to be able to do that so that these people that I'm helping my clients can heal, but I want them to heal in a way without any judgment, without any passing any judgment on themselves. So she's helped me to see how to find these patterns and form them in such a cohesive way that I can help to bring healing to these people without any judgment so that they can move forward, you know? Um, I've worked with cleavers like for family, friends, and clients for, again, a um, stagnant lymphatic system for tonsillitis um, after they've been given a round of antibiotics for a sensitive nervous system for edema um, for fibrocystic breast um, let's see I've made a blend for like a spring tonic you know similar to this one but for the specific person because you know we each have our own like constitution so anyway I've made a blend uh, a spring tonic also a heart blend um, an anti-aging serum and a toning spray and I think the biggest biggest thing is going to be for relationship issues I have um, given cleavers to clients a lot for relationship issues um, now I have not personally used cleavers for the next thing that I'm going to mention um, but I do want to mention, like I said, I've not personally worked with cleavers for these issues I'm about to talk about, but I have talked to other herbalists. Um, I've read numerous case studies, Materia Medicas, um, and like it really explored these case studies. Um, that's one of the nerdy things that I like to do. Uh, but anyway, so cleavers has also been used for epilepsy, certain cancer, certain venereal diseases, and then this amazing herbalist that I absolutely love and respect so much. His name is Matthew Woods, and he works with cleavers for neurological diseases um, known as Morton's Neuroma and Neurofibrositis. So that's, you know, I just wanted to mention those there. Like I said, I've personally not worked with cleavers for these issues. And, and one way it's like, I want to work with cleavers for these issues, but then again, I don't because then that means one of my clients is going to be experiencing one of these issues. So I, I hope to never have to work with cleavers that way. Now, one other thing I do want to mention to you guys that I forgot that I work with cleavers with. So I also have this really nervous energy, or not so much now, um, but I used to have this nervous energy all the time. Like I had anxiety attacks, panic attacks, like full on hyperventilating panic attacks. But anyway, I would, um, some when I was really stressed out, I would get these rashes like on my arms, like right through here on both of my arms. And so I worked with cleavers, um, with those rashes and she really helped as well as nerve issues in my neck and my shoulder uh, she was absolutely amazing with that as well and then like i said the inflamed you know joints and stuff so anyway um all right let's see what's next all right so cleavers can be all the parts anyway you can eat cleavers raw now, I typically don't eat cleavers raw unless they are very, very young, very tender, um, very fresh, the little shoots, because those hairs get in my throat and I feel like I cannot swallow. I feel like they are choking me and I cannot stand the feeling of them being in my throat. Just thinking about it, ooh, I can't stand it. But anyway, so when, when I do eat, eat cleavers when she's really young, I typically add her to salads, sandwiches, wraps, um, and now I will, when she's older, I, I will eat cleavers still, but I saute um, cleavers. I will use her like a pot herb. I'll add her to uh, soups, stir fries, stews, you know, those type of things. Now, my favorite way to eat cleavers is going to be pesto. If you like basil pesto, then you might want to give um, cleavers pesto a try. It's cleavers and chickweed, 
and it is so good. I absolutely love it, but you know, I put it in the blender so I grind it up so I don't have to worry about those hairs. Now, I also make a green juice. It's kind of like those healthy green juices that people drink, but it's a cleaver juice, and again, I, I grind it up uh, in the blender so I don't have to worry about those hairs. Now, I also drink cleaver tea, uh, cleaver tinctures. Again, the spring, so I've got this spring tonic. You can see my um, cleaver tincture here. Um, so yeah, I, I also make a cleaver oil. I can show you this. This is my last, this was the last batch. I had this much left to make this little jar. And this is a cleaver's oil. Um, but I have a jar. Well, actually I've got four jars that are this size, um, but this is just dried cleavers. And this is a cleaver oil. And after I strain the cleaver uh, oil, then I make, uh, or I can add it to lotion, salves, other oils, um, bath blends, um, face serums, you know, those type of things. And then you can also, of course, work with cleavers in your workings and your witchcraft. Um, but anyway, so cleavers does have a green taste, honestly. To me, it's she has a really, really, really strong green taste, and I personally love the taste of cleavers. Um, you might also notice a very light, astringent taste. She also has um, kind of sweet notes, salty notes, and minerally notes. I know that minerally is not a word, um, but she she has a mineral taste. Um, and but like I said, above all of these, the the strongest is going to be that green taste. Now, I find that if you tincture cleavers um, when she's fairly young, she will, your tincture is going to have a light, uh, sweet vanilla taste to it. So, it's got some vanilla notes and I personally love cleavers this way. Actually, taking uh, cleavers tincture form is my preferred method of taking cleavers. Now, I do want to mention, if you are going to be ingesting cleavers, then you want to make sure you work with her in her freshest form possible. Um, I would recommend maybe not um, drying cleavers out if you're going to ingest it. So, if you're using her for a remedy medicine, you want to work with her fresh. The reason I say this is because she starts to lose her properties in that drying process. Now, it's perfectly fine for witchcraft. You know, if you're just using it in your witchcraft practice, then that's not a problem, you know, at all. You can you can have her dried. You see, I've got this big jar of dried um, cleavers. Now, you can even, if you want to, you can get away with making an oil with the dry, dry cleavers. The properties just won't be as strong. Now, I do tend to tincture her, I mean, to make the oil fresh. Um, and, you know, so you have to, um, you have to pretty much, when you harvest cleavers, go ahead and work with her then. Um, now, you can preserve cleavers by, you know, making a tincture like in alcohol or by making, you know, like a spring tonic. I use apple cider vinegar in my spring tonics. Um, or you can make, um, you know, a cleaver oil. You can preserve it in a cleaver oil. However, it will last about a year. Um, so you want to make sure that you're finding a carrier oil that has a good stable shelf life of at least, you know, a year. And then when you make your cleaver oil, you want to make sure that you add so once you strain it, you know, you want to make sure that you add some vitamin E or um, if you have a rosemary infusion, um, you want to add some of it because rosemary can preserve it as well, you know. So you can do that. Now, another thing that you can do is make a, a chickweed cleaver pesto. Like I said, I will make a really big batch of chickweed and cleaver pesto and then I freeze it. So I pop it into um, an ice tray and it makes perfect portion size as well. All I have to do is pop one out and use it and then I just keep it in the freezer and you know, it will hold a lot longer. Now it won't last near as long as these other ways, but it will last you know, for you to eat. Now, you can also make a cleaver juice, and once you make that juice, uh, you want to add a little bit of alcohol to it, and it will help to preserve it as well, and you can, if you don't want to add alcohol to it as a preservative, then you can 
do it in the ash trays and freeze it as well. No, it won't last as long, but you can do that as well. Um, so let's see. Um, cleavers. Oh, I remember. I remember. All right. So you want to harvest cleavers before she goes to seed. So I typically like to harvest the, the stem and the leaves um, before she even flowers. So I feel like the energy of the plant is going to be more concentrated into that leaf and those stems um, before she flowers because I feel like once she starts to flower, her energy is going to travel up into those flowers and that's where the energy is going to be the strongest. So I feel like when the energy is down in those leaves and stem, it makes my medicine more potent. So that's when I harvest um, cleavers. Now I do harvest the flowers right when they open or directly like right before. they. I know that they're going to open like the next day then I will harvest those flowers. Now, I typically use the flowers to make a, uh, like a flower remedy, and I use that flower remedy in relationship issues. Now, I mainly use the stem and leaves, you know, um, for medicinal properties, but like I said, I will use that flower remedy for relationship issues. Um, I also want to mention, if you want to harvest the seeds, you can. You can actually use those seeds as a coffee substitute, and it does have a light coffee taste. Um, but you want to make sure those little fruits have turned brown when you pull them off and then you want to pop them in the oven and roast them and you'll notice they even have this light very faint coffee scent whenever they're roasting now if you want to make a red dye out of cleavers you can also harvest those thin thread like roots and that red dye like this to me this is how onion cleavers was like related um, to the matter family is this red dye. Um, so yeah, you can also harvest, or personally, I, I harvest cleavers on Friday in the hour of Venus. I feel like that's, that's her strongest time. That's when she's the most potent. Her energy is strongest uh, Friday in the hour of Venus. Now, you can even get more specific if you want to. So say, you're still going to harvest on Friday in the hour of Venus, but now you're going to harvest when the moon or the sun, depending on what you work with. We'll just say moon because that's mostly what I work with. Um, but anyway, you'll harvest when the moon is in a specific astrological sign because, you know, each sign corresponds with a, a body system or an organ. And also it has its own energy because it's ruled by a planet. So it's got that planetary energy as well. So, for example, let's just say, okay, I'm going to harvest cleavers on Friday in the hour of Venus when the moon is in Pisces for the lymphatic system or when the moon's in Libra for the skin and the kidneys or when the moon's in Cancer for the breast and uterus or in Scorpio for the sex organs um, and bladder, you know, so forth and so on. But I want to mention too, like if maybe you're not harvesting cleavers, maybe someone's gifted you cleavers or um, you've purchased some cleavers or maybe let's say you already have a cleaver oil um, uh, or say you want to use cleavers, you know, you want to make a barrier out of cleavers, you know, the plant in a work in that you're doing. That's perfectly fine. You can still do those same thing, just how I said for harvesting, you know, on Friday in the hour of Venus. And, and then use those um, use those astrological signs depending on um, if you work with the moon or the sun. And you can do that same thing. So if you've already made your cleavers, then you would charge it, you know, at that specific time. Or if you're going to do your working, then you could do it at that specific time. Or maybe you just, somebody gifted you, you know, a jar of cleavers, then you could charge it up, you know, on Friday in the hour of Venus. So I hope that, you know, helps you guys out a little bit. So Cleaver's message to you. Now Cleaver's wants you to know that when she shows up in your life, it's a time of cleansing. It's a time of purification, of creating and setting defined boundaries and letting go. It's time to let go of who you're not and step back into who you truly are. Let's say that one more time. It's time to let go of who you're not and step back into who you truly are. Don't give up. Be tenacious. Cleavers can also teach us 
when we need to fight or when we need to flee, just like a deer, because there's always a right time. Maybe it's time to sit back and prepare, you know, and, and so cleavers can help you to figure out when that time is right. Now, cleavers governs relationships, um, and she can also teach us how to let go of what's no longer serving us or harming us, especially in relationships. Cleavers can help to bring healing to a relationship, especially if uh, a couple is um, going through a little rough patch, you know, she can help them um, to find that balance, to find that connection again. Cleavers can also help if you've been through a bad relationship, whether this is a current or past um, relationship trauma, she can help you to overcome that trauma that you're experiencing. Cleavers can help with attachment issues. She can help you deal with those attachment issues and even issues that stem from that relationship trauma. And this can be physical or emotional. Cleavers can also help you um, with ancestral wounds that's been or ancestral wounds that's been passed down. Cleavers can help um, when you've got like one person in a relationship is like the clinger and the other person is very independent. She can help them come together and find this balance. She can help them to see from a higher perspective, to see where each person's coming from so they can come together and form this cohesive bond, you know, from seeing from each other's perspective and to, you know, find that, that balance within this relationship with one another. It's like the clinger releases those hooked hairs from her, uh, from his or her or their partner and the independent person, it's like they drive their roots down deeper. They anchor themselves in this relationship. Um, cleavers can also help when our cleavers can help you to stand on your own two feet again, especially when you're completely entangled in another person's reality. It's like you create this version of yourself that you expect um, your partner to want. You know, you create this version of yourself that you think they want. And hell, I don't know, maybe your partner does want this this version of yourself, wants you to, to change who you are. But that's not who you truly are. That's not fair. I think it's so wrong when an, another person tries to change their partner, whether it's making them gain weight, lose weight, dye their hair a certain color, get a boob job, get an ass implant, you know, act this way. Maybe you're funny and bubbly and jokey and, and maybe they don't like that and they want you to be very calm and serious or vice versa. But that's not who you're tru you truly are and that's not fair to you. You... you will find somebody. So cleavers can help you to almost disassociate from your emotions so that you can see this relationship for what it is from a higher perspective because there's somebody out there for you that's going to love you for you, that loves everything about you, your flaws and all. You should not have to change for anyone and cleavers can help you to see that. Cleavers can also help when you're going through just a little rut. So let's just say that, you know, things that normally don't bother you at all, like little things don't bother you, they are thoroughly pissing you off. It's like everything gets on your nerves, almost to the point where you're kind of like waiting for somebody to say something so you can pop off. You just, everything gets under your skin. It's like you can't focus on anything. You can't concentrate. You're bored out of your mind. Nothing nothing that you do really satisfies you. It's almost like you feel like your life has become stagnant. Cleavers can help you to see what's going on. And speaking of stagnation, that's one thing that I want to bring up again because I actually left this out earlier. So cleavers, that's kind of how she does on you like how I was talking about moving things so cleavers she works on our inner water you know so it's like she cleans and clears that inner water when it becomes like a body of stagnant water she gets things moving again she sweeps away debris just like how she can sweep away kidney stones and bladder stones and even heal, heal sorry fibrocystic tissues within the kidneys which I think is just absolutely amazing so anyway I, I threw that in there because whenever I said that it made me think of that and I did forget to mention that so I do apologize 
But anyway, so cleavers is also very protective, especially with children or when you're in a toxic relationship. She She's very protective. Um, so let me tell y'all this. All right, so like I've told y'all earlier, I love reading like Materia Medicas, uh, medical journals. I love to read old, old, old Materia Medicas that they're, it's kind of like you're having to decode them because we don't use the same kind of words that they used back then and it is out there. But anyway, I love reading those. So I was reading um, one on cleavers and it was talking about how if a woman is pregnant and she takes cleavers into the house, she will have a successful pregnancy. There's no way that she can miscarry. And if a, um, like during childbirth, if the bed is prepared with cleavers, that you will have a successful um, labor and delivery that the baby will be fine. So I thought that was really interesting um, that that's in there because that's one of the things that Cleavers has taught me. One of the, the things that she has shown me and spoke to me about how protective she is over people that's going through toxic relationships. But also, you know, she's very protective over children in general. Now, there's something else that I want to mention that my dad told me. Now, I don't know how much of this is true, um, but I do remember my dad telling me this. So, when I was a kid, I used to go hunting with my dad. Now, we never got to hunt because I never shut up. I always talked, and so most of the time, he would just take me walking through the woods because he knew I wasn't going to hush. Um, so, we were walking through this thicket one day when I was a kid, and I remember seeing this patch of cleaver, like this huge patch of cleavers on the ground but you could tell that some animal you know had been laying in it like how the the cleavers was laid and so i asked my dad you know what was going on there like what he what animal he thought was laying in there and so he told me deer and so i asked well why you know what are they doing so he told me there was a couple of reasons he said the first reason is um deer love cleavers and especially when they're in bloom because it masks their scent so it keeps them protected from hunters and other predators he also told me that they like to use cleavers as bedding. They like to sleep in cleavers. And also that they use cleavers to keep their babies safe. Like when they're out foraging for food, they leave the babies in the cleaver patch to keep them protected. So again, that's another, you know, it, they, it just all falls together it just beautifully. So I've used cleavers for um, fertility workings and she worked just, beautifully with fertility workings and I associate it with not only the story that my dad told but the information that you know I found and how she told me how protective she is you know, you know over children I've also used cleavers and beauty spells especially for people that um have went through a very traumatic relationship and they really have lost all confidence and uh, self-esteem within their self it's almost like their spirit is broken. So I've made these beauty spells for them so that they can see the beauty inside and outside with them. So not only is it helping them to heal, you know, it's they also can gain this confidence in, their, in themselves and they can see that they are beautiful inside and out. That just because that fucker, you know, talked smack about you or broke you down, it doesn't mean that that's what it you know it really is so she works beautifully in that like I said cleavers is also considered um, or cleavers is deer medicine and deer medicine is considered a love medicine and just about anything I've ever read about cleavers talks about how cleavers are used in witchcraft you know for love medicine and I'm not disagreeing I, I completely agree that it can be used in love medicine especially for like commitment to keep a person committed to you um, you can even bind a couple together um you can hit a couple to heal you know they're going through the rough patch you can have a have that um to to bring that connection maybe you kind of feel out of connection with each other or um maybe there's something going on in your sex life i don't know but cleavers is amazing to help you figure out those issues um, like I said, you can use cleavers, you know, for a binding to bind a couple together um, because cleavers is a creeping plant and all across the world, creeping plants are used as binding plants. However, not all creeping plants are used as binding plants, but a huge majority of creeping plants 
are used as binding plants. Cleavers is a creeping plant and she is an excellent, excellent binding plant. Like I said, binding, I mean, creeping plants have been used all over the world and in different witchcraft for bindings. So like I said, you can bind a couple together, but guess what? You can also keep a couple apart with cleavers. Um, you can also suffocate a relationship, especially if you know somebody or I'll use, I had a friend and a client that came to me um, who wanted, she wanted to get out of a, her relationship. It was a very long-term relationship, but it was very toxic and she wanted to get out of it. And she had actually had broke up with her significant other and, um, you know, told them to leave and they would not leave. They just absolutely refused to leave. So cleavers, yeah, <laughs> cleavers help to get that person moving along so like i said you can you can suffocate a relationship um with cleavers you can keep you know people separated with cleavers um you can you can create physical barriers you know th that um firewall like protection powder where you, it's like you're creating a wall of fire you can do that with cleavers as well and create this barrier. You know, um, you can use, add cleavers to your protection workings. Um, you also heal, and so any of the things that we've mentioned thus far, the things that cleavers is amazing at, you can do healing workings using cleavers or, you know, add her to your other healing workings. So one of the things that I love to do is use cleavers to stuff poppets. Um, and I've also used cleavers to make the actual poppet, so the doll, to form the actual doll I've made with cleavers, because remember how she sticks together, she clings or cleaves, so you can make the perfect doll out of cleavers, and it will hold together, so I've made this wash for um, cleavers, like when I made a doll, and I would put the doll in it, and like I'm washing it, um, especially if I'm helping, you know, a client with um, releasing what they've been through so that they can bring healing in. I've used um, cleavers, you know, in that way. You can also make like an intention oil with cleavers. You can add cleavers to a mojo bag. You can grind cleavers into a powder and add to candles. Um, like I said, you can make the physical barrier. You can do, um, you know, you can grind into a powder and make a physical barrier or you can use the, the whole cleaver plant and I've even braided it before and then made a physical barrier. Um, you can add cleavers to purification baths or foot soaks. You can even do like a, um, a beauty spell where you like wash your face with cleavers or add to um, a face serum, you know, or a spray. You can make um, a salve, like a meditation salve with cleavers to help you get out of your mind and bring you back into your body. Um, that's another thing that's amazing. So there's just, there's so many different ways that you can work with cleavers, but I do want to mention, because everything I see is cleavers is great for relationships, great for relationships, great for relationships, you know, love working, love working, love, love working. But I wanted to mention too, that cleavers is great, you know, to keep a couple apart, to break up a relationship to dominate in a relationship i've used cleavers for that too to dominate in a relationship and she worked beautifully i also want to mention i used cleavers one time so i had this client and friend that um was going to court and so she had these people that were or she had this person that was going to court that other person was in the wrong completely but she was going to lie in court and she also had some people that was coming forward that she was using like witnesses to lie for her. However, my friend did not have anybody um, to back her up, you know, to show that these people were lying. And if they ended up winning, then it was just going to be a really tough situation. So I did a um, like shut up spell or shut the fuck up spell. I have this um, oil that I make called Shut Your Gator. Um, and so I incorporated the cleavers in this and I I use I did it like a lemon so this was my shut shut uh shut the fuck up or shut your mouth or shut your gator spell so I used a lemon you know you make the slip to make the mouth and I stuffed it with cleavers like for the hairs in the throat to keep that 
throat closed up if they tried to lie, you know, or um, talk negatively about my client, then those little hairs were going to affect that throat. And y'all, it worked beautifully. I mean, I, I added other things too, so it was great. The court case every time that they would try to lie, it would they couldn't, and they would they looked like complete fools. They would start stuttering and like clearing their throat, <clears throat> and you know it, they just looked like fools. But anyway, she has worked amazing for that. Um, and then, like I've said earlier, for um, relationships, like you can even make a soap and infuse it with cleaver oil or even put the cleavers directly in there and you know to wash yourself you can um put cleavers under your mattress like there's just so many different ways that you can work with cleavers now i do want to mention that there are some precautions that we need to go over now overall cleavers is extremely safe like you can give cleavers to infants and children like she's that safe but um so one of the things I want to mention first is, you know, cleavers is very moistening, very cooling to the body. However, you have to remember she has that diuretic effect on the body. So if you have to take her for like extended periods of time, so for a long period of time, then she can begin to dry out those tissues. So you want to just make sure you are getting plenty of water, you're getting plenty of fruits and veggies, nuts and seeds, and then you can even incorporate some other herbs, like some very nourishing herbs, um, some demulcent or moistening herbs to your blends to help to counteract you know, that. So um, that's one thing that I wanted to mention. Another thing is if you're allergic to any plants in the Ruby AC family, then you want to avoid cleavers. If you have very sensitive skin, then you want to avoid cleavers because the juice of cleavers might affect you. It might cause you to have a rash. Um, let's see, oh, if you are diabetic, you need to make sure that you are working with a local herbalist. Not somebody online, not from videos you watch, but a local herbalist. You need to make sure that you're working with a local herbalist before you start working with cleavers. I'm not saying that you can't work with cleavers, but you, you need to have a local herbalist if you're a diabetic. Or if you have other medical conditions or you're on a whole bunch of medications, then you want to talk to your primary care physician or your local herbalist and um, see if it's recommended for you to work with cleavers or not. And this is for medicinally, you know, you taking it internally. Um, so that's about it. That's really the only uh, precautions that cleavers really has. Now, I'm gonna get off this video because it's probably been about an hour that I've been recording and I don't want to overwhelm you guys. However, I have a lot of stories about cleavers and I've also talked to some of my clients and they've given me permission to tell you some stories um, of experiences that we've had when I've you know been working with clients um, so if you would like to hear any of those stories make sure that you comment down below before next week because next week I'm gonna upload some recipes for you guys um, so you know I want to give just a, just maybe one or two recipes for you for cleavers and so if you want to hear those stories make sure that you comment down below and let me know so I can incorporate them you know along with the recipe video now I will also meditate um, with cleavers before I do the video I always do and see if she has something else that she wants me to share um, and doing it that way I normally pull cards um, so if if there's something that somebody needs to hear specifically right then, then I will also, like, she will let me know when I connect with her, and we'll also pull some cards. So, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all about cleavers, please comment down below and let me know. You can reach out to me on any of my social media, my email, you know, or you can just comment down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, we will continue this plant series. Thank you.